Hey there, Paper Crafters. We are back at Creative World 2015, and we are over uh, at a very interesting booth, and we're going to introduce you to some new products you may not know about, and we thought this was a great quote to kick that off with. Take a little bit of a look here at some of the products, and then we're going to do a little bit of learning. I'm an artist from the Miami area and I'm working at the Pebeo booth today to introduce people to Pebeo's uh, unique paints, the fantasy line of paints, as well as share with them some of the effects and some of the special mediums uh, that are the acrylics. The company also has a line of resins, both clear and colored that you can paint with as well as coat your work with. And what I think is one of the most special inventions by the Pebeo company for using with some of the liquid paints that I'm gonna show you in a second is something called a liquid art panel. The liquid art panel has a quarter inch lip on it. You can see that there. So that you can use it with any kind of liquid paint and especially the company has developed some liquid oil paints so they're liquid alkyd oils and that's why I'm wearing gloves because I prefer to use gloves when I work with oil paints but they are in liquid form there's a fantasy paint called moon that is self manipulating there's another fantasy paint called prism which is also self manipulating and if you look over here you can see the effects of the prism and the moon. These are the prism paints and these are the moon paints. So they self-manipulate and make interesting shapes. Those are unique to Pebeo. And then in addition, there are two other kind of paints. There's a stained glass effect paint, which is called Vitrail. And then there's a very solid paint, very opaque, called Ceramic. These are very exciting liquid paints. They can be poured directly into the liquid art panel or you can make designs using an outliner which comes in 11 different colors including my personal favorite which is glitter and you can then fill in the spaces with the liquid paints if you want to get more representational. So I'm going to put that liquid paint that you paint that on first and let it dry and then fill it in? No. What I've done on this panel in particular is I've put acrylic paint in the background. Pebeo has an entire line of acrylic paint and I've painted the background with acrylic first. Then I use the outliner to create shapes and then I'm filling the shapes with the liquid alkyd paints. Now, all of the paints, the resins, the acrylic paints, and the liquid oil paints can be layered. So it's the ultimate mixed media. You can layer first the liquid alkyd, then put acrylic on top of it, then put some resin on it, then put some more liquid alkyd on it, then put some more of the uh, resin on it or more acrylic. So the sky's the limit. You can do anything with the different layers of the paint. My advice is to let each layer dry. So you're going to put the paint on, let it dry. Then you're going to go on with your next layer of the exciting paints. So I'm actually going to pour one for you so that you can see how the paints self-manipulate. In particular, the, uh, the moon paint effect occurs faster. So I'm going to pour this one for you first. Each paint has mica in the bottom of it, so it needs to be stirred. This bottle was already stirred, and I'm going to show you what I do to stir this one. So I use a popsicle stick, and I stir it to get the mica up from the bottom. Certain colors, pigments operate differently with the mica. So if you use a silver or a red 
um, you'll find that as you're using the, as you're stirring it, you get a big clump of mica at the bottom. So just use the stick and work the mica in first. So once the mica is completely mixed, you can simply pour it. So, so far that's about two half bottles. So this is about a bottle and an eight, eight by 10 panel. Another fact that I love about the liquid alkyd paints that's different from working with your typical acrylic paints is that the colors on the opposite end of the color wheel do not make mud. They percolate between each other and they stay separated. So if you look here, I've created a skin using a piece of silicone with the purple and the yellow. Usually if you put purple and yellow acrylic paint together, you get a muddy brown color. But if you look here, you see how it's percolated between each other and it's gorgeous. So that means anybody can use these paints and be successful. You won't get mud. So, so for I'm, this one, did you use just a silicone sheet? Like a it's a silicone baking sheet. Okay. is what I used to put that on. And the liquid alkyd paints, because they are oil-based, you need to let them sit for about two days. And then when you peel them off, they're like leather and they're very flexible. So then you can cut them or wrap them around because it's liquid paint. So if I have a round surface and I pour it on the round surface, it's gonna drip off. But if I want to control it, I pour a skin on a piece of silicone and then when it's dry in two days, I can cut it or tear it to shape and then use gel medium. Hebio sells a gel medium that you can use to attach it to another surface. Now, I'm going to show you in this panel that I just poured, putting moon in red, right? Normally red and green make mud, okay? They make a nasty brown. But when I put this in here, and this is red, so it's probably going to have a big clump of mica at the bottom of it. See that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that color needs to be worked a little bit more to be sure that that mica gets all mixed in there. Each bottle is a chemical composition that you want to be sure that everything is mixed together and homogenous before you pour it, because that's what the chemist designed it for. They designed it to do its work if it's all mixed together. So now we're going to pour the red in, you know, and everybody goes, oh, red and green, no, it's going to look horrible. But this is going to look good. Another technique that I use is I take my stick and I just gently push the liquid over to the edge. Or if you're very adventuresome, you can lift the whole panel and it's still liquid, so you can see it shift. And I try to, what I've learned from experience is that you can use a stick to mix the colors together. However, don't overwork it. If you overwork it, then the colors, they don't blend together. However, they mix together to the point where you lose the integrity of each color. So you want to only mix it a very small amount. And now if you watch this for a few minutes, you'll start to see the effect of the moon paint. Create a beautiful painting and it was that simple. And you said the moon paint dries quick, quicker than the others, is that correct? No, the moon paint is a liquid alkyd. A liquid alkyd is an oil paint with a drying agent in it. So it's been chemically modified so that it will dry much faster than an oil paint in about half the time. So if it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick or about one to two millimeter, or centimeter, no, millimeters, sorry, then it'll take about um, three days 
for it to cure. And that depends on the temperature and the humidity of where you are. Because I'm in Florida where it's very hot and very humid and my paintings can take up to a week to dry. But what I like with the liquid art panel is I pour a painting on Monday and I take it to a gallery on Saturday. It's already ready to go. And you don't have to put any sort of uh, varnish on it when it's done either. The painting is, when it's dry, it's finished. If you want to, you can put a layer of resin over it and then put more paint over that and continue to layer it. When I work on paper, that's what I do. I paint with it a little bit and then I let it dry and I paint with something else a little bit. And so you'll see in my journal that's here, some of the different ways that I layer the paints and work with them.